The most desired watch by Rolex, the Daytona, is interestingly not the oldest watch in the Rolex catalog. While Rolex have been producing sports watches since 1930s, it wasn't until 1955 that Rolex introduced a manual wind chronograph watch in the Oyster case. This was even after the Rolex Submariner, the GMT and the Explorer were already in the production. What's even more interesting is that this first chronograph watch in the Oyster case wasn't called as Daytona. In fact, it wasn't until another 10 years down the line that the first Rolex chronograph watch had the name Daytona printed on the dial. Before this time and until 1963, this watch was simply called as Cosmograph, a name that still remains printed on the Rolex Daytona dial, produced even today. Another interesting historical attribute with the Daytona is that when the first time the name Daytona appeared on the dial, it was printed right under the word Cosmograph. This was later changed in 1967 when the word Daytona moved to the top of 6 o'clock position and it has maintained its placement and position on the dial ever since. If you are wondering where did the name Cosmograph come from? It was the name of Florida City where in 1936 the first stock car race was held on the Daytona Beach Road Course. Another 66 years down the line and we are talking about the watch that while doesn't look too different from what it was over six decades ago, is entirely a different watch that meets and excels all the benchmarks for modern times. What Rolex do exceptionally well is the way they evolve with time into something that doesn't really move away from its iconic looks, the form, aesthetics and overall vibe yet maintains and follows all the technical specs for modern and current times. We live in the strange times where basically any watch in steel by Rolex is hard to come by. The watches that used to be available on the shelf just a couple of years ago have a wait list longer than what can be counted on fingertips. And while some or probably most of this is achieved by intelligent marketing that makes quite simply very basic watches as very hard watches to come by. The story with the Daytona is slightly different. It is indeed the most sought after Rolex in the whole range and the rarity, the scarcity and the difficulty in being able to buy one from the authorized dealer has been around for over a decade longer than the current craziness with basically anything steel and anything Rolex. But when you start to look closer at the Daytona, you really do start to realize why it is such a spectacular piece like nothing else. Rolex are truly the leaders in executing three things in perfect combination. Size, aesthetics and the proportions. And these core ingredients for any watch design are rarely seen to be put together in a similar fashion by many other watch manufacturers. While all of these attributes are available on the Daytona, on top of that, we have a perfect combination of glossy black dial, white gold hour markers and dial hands, the lume, a ceramic bezel with a similar glossy texture as the dial, and then the sub-dials that offer the Daytona the iconic looks. In terms of its size, while Rolex market the Daytona as a 40mm watch, if you ever tried it on the wrist and found it to wear a little too smaller than you expected, the size is actually not quite 40mm. I will add all the dimensions of Daytona measured by my caliber in my blog where I'll also explain why it's a smaller watch than you would expect and the link to my blog can be found in my pinned comment below. I included the macro analysis of a Daytona in my earlier review of white panda dial and similar to many Rolex steel sports watches, I have rarely found the quality of a Rolex to be inferior, especially in their professional range. I will include more detailed macro shots in my blog as per the link below 
So if you are interested, my blog has everything you want to see and know. What I am not a big fan of on the Daytona are the screwed in pushes and quite frankly, the time it takes to unscrew the pushes to activate and reset them more often than not takes away the pleasure of using them, at least for me. If you don't screw the pushes back in, your Daytona is then no more water resistant and you definitely don't want to make the mistake of leaving them open even if you are not planning to swim. I also discussed in my review of Panda Dial Daytona and I will reiterate, the case of Daytona is not symmetrical and the lugs on each side are not even balanced. I will discuss it again in my blog another day. On the wrist, the Daytona wears like an absolute Rolex dream and offers the dimensions, aesthetics and the looks that any Rolex enthusiast really desires and looks for. It offers such a perfect combination of heft and aesthetics that while the Daytona is overall a smaller watch than a typical 40mm Rolex, it doesn't look or feel small as such. It is also not the thinnest watch to be seen and measures at 12.3mm but then it also doesn't look too thick or chunky and that's partly because of its smaller case size. If you are used to wearing Rolex Submariner, you will find it to wear relatively small and due to a comparatively smaller size, it also weighs about 10% lighter than the Submariner. The watch case lugs are slightly curved that allow the case to contour to the wrist and offer the wearability where it simply hugs the wrist beautifully and you'd be pushed to fold it. The polished center links of the bracelet make the Daytona look like a dress watch while it is still a professional watch technically. The clasp also comes with a polished center part and has 5mm extension link too. There's then further micro holes in the clasp that allow for fine adjustment to give the right fit for the wear, which is always a welcome feature. Rolex Daytona Black or White Dial are two of the most sought after watches in the market. And while we live in an artificially inflated market, the Daytona has been the most popular Rolex for decades. When you experience and try it in real life, you do realize that Rolex have really mastered the skill of watchmaking and they offer not just the most versatile and durable watches in the market, they really make the watches in perfect sizes, dimensions, aesthetics and proportions. In the time when most wear the watches to enjoy and take the pleasure, let's admit that the screwed in pushes don't really break the deal as much as an oversized and a chunky case. The best part with the Rolex is that it offers all the high-end experience but then at the time of need, it is there for you and it simply doesn't let you down. No matter what you buy it for, it does not know how to let you down. Function, pleasure, aesthetics or experience, heritage or prestige. Oh well, not that I encourage but let's say it, many would even buy it for investment and it still doesn't let you down.